In today's presentation, we're going to show you how to use Opus. It's a new capability in QUID that lets you visualize and analyze any set of text-based data. A couple things to keep in mind. First of all, this is an open session, so we're going to talk for a bit, but we would love to hear your questions throughout the presentation. You can enter those in the questions section of GoToWebinar. It's in the control panel there on your right side. And we're going to pause in a couple spots to answer those. Uh, if we don't get to yours, don't worry, we didn't forget about you. We'll have some dedicated time at the end for Q&A. So today's cast of characters, I am Jeff McEwen, the manager of content creation at Quid. I basically use the software to show off use cases in a wide range of industries and applications. Also presenting today with me is my partner in crime on the content team, Carlos Folgar. Carlos has led teams uh, working with some of our biggest clients at Quid, including uh, some of the world's top con consulting firms and global companies. We know that a lot of you are current customers, uh, but it looks like we have some new people on the line as well. So I'm going to give a quick five-minute background on six-year-old startup. We're based in San Francisco. We have offices in New York and London. We work with more than 200 companies around the globe in a wide range of sectors and industries, everyone from Pfizer to Hyundai. Our software unlocks insights that are currently sitting around in your unstructured text data. So the software does this essentially by helping people create visual maps either around that data or around topics that they're choosing. So Quid is really driven uh, in a way by your own curiosity. Most of you know this, but Quid is based in a web browser. Uh, the natural language processing algorithms read and organize your data and turn it then into an interactive visualization, a really cool one, I might add, uh, that lets you increase your depth of knowledge and gain valuable insights in less time than conventional methods. People use Quid in a couple of ways. Uh, two, two broad applications we found. The first is market analysis where you're answering questions like, what types of companies are forming around a new technology? That, that might be you know, the Internet of Things, self-driving cars, something like that, and you're wondering how it will impact your business. And you're also, with that uh, particular use of quid, you're answering questions like, who are my competitors in a given field, and what do their strategies appear to be? Second application is narrative analysis. Um, it, Essentially, you're answering questions like, how is my brand positioned in the overall narrative? How does this map to our goal? Or, or in some cases, what, what are our customers saying about it? The value that Quid brings to clients in these spaces is around, first, analyzing huge volumes of text data that wouldn't have been possible prior, and two, giving that data visual structure so that teams can tell compelling data-driven stories. And those stories can then be shared with clients in, in Quid software or through slides. And you know if you've been working in Quid for the past few years, we work with a couple of different kinds of databases. It's uh, global news and blogs, which let you research any topic uh, or brand in the news. Uh, investment data, which, which comes in the form of the company's data set, which lets you map out industry or technology sectors and you know compare market sec sec segments based on things like investment, maturity, and growth. Then a third data set, uh, my favorite, uh, because it's so stealthy, is the patents data set, which shows you essentially what intellectual property is being developed for a particular technology. Basically, you can see which organizations are filing patents around what. Today, we're going to talk to you about a totally new tool in Quid, and it basically lets you bring your own data. We are talking about any kind of text data. This can be your a bunch of a pile of unread emails. This can be the King James Bible, and I'm not joking. Uh, we actually did an analysis recently of the Bible. Uh, so it's a really cool new tool, and uh, it is called Opus. I'm going to let Carlos tell you how it works. Take it away, Carlos. Thank you, Jess, and thank you all for joining us. You know, for some time now, uh, you know, we've been offering multiple data sets here in Quid, but we know there are plenty of other unique types of data out there that can provide valuable insights for our customers. 
You know, Opus is a new capability that allows you to synthesize and understand any text-based data set through QUID. Use cases generally fall under three arenas. We can use this to understand your customers, we can track your competitors, and we can also use it to understand your own internal organization. There are many data sets now that can be used under each of these different use cases. For example, let's say we want to understand your customers. We can analyze product reviews, online forums, survey responses, social media. And if you want to be tracking your competitors and as well as understand and gain knowledge in your market, we can compare different reviews. We can analyze job postings, professional profiles, clinical trials, corporate filings, as well as academic and scientific papers. And for your own internal organization, we can run net promoter score surveys, uh, data through QUID. We can run employee surveys, uh, conference calls, uh, contact center calls, and any other internal documents that you may have. Okay, so the first example we're going to showcase today is analyzing product and service reviews for the use case of understanding your customers. But now we'd like to poll the audience to determine what we look at afterwards. You should now see a pop-up window appear with a few options of data sets to select. Please take a few seconds to select the option that interests you most. We have understanding your competitors, where we can also show you how we compared reviews for different brands. We can use academic papers, again, to understand competition and emerging technology in a specific sector. And we also have an example of employee surveys for a large technology company. And we'll just give you just about four more seconds, if you don't mind choosing what interests you most. Awesome. Thank you for your votes. What we collected will inform our following examples. Okay, let's get started by looking at product and service reviews. We've collected hundreds of reviews of Nissan dealerships in Massachusetts from a leading online review site. First, let's look at the data we're going to work with and how it should be structured. Right here is an example uh, in simply just an Excel spreadsheet of the data that we use to upload into Quid Opus. Each row here in your spreadsheet is an ind individual review that we've collected. Now the columns in the spreadsheet represent the different components of the review, including the title, the review itself, we have the star rating, the date, details of the location of the, of the business being reviewed, and even more metadata. Now, at any point in time as you're using Opus, just want to clarify and let you all know that the Quid team is certainly here to help you organize your data. Okay. So, Let's jump now back into the software. Here in Quid, in my project folder, I can simply click up at the top, upload data here in my top left. I'm going to open up a menu. And now we can either drag and drop our CSV file, which we saved from the Excel spreadsheet, or you can, or you can use the upload CSV button. In this case, I'm going to quickly show how I can upload here. Simply drag and drop, and now Quid is already starting to read and synthesize our data. The first menu that appears is actually what we're going to help determine how Quid reads this data. Let me show you here what this first step entails. As you've all been in your networks before in Quid, you know that your nodes always start off with a title. 
In this case, what we can see here is the first title of a review. And then, of course, in the information panel that you're familiar with in our other data sets, we also show under a section called the body the text that Quid uses to read the different reviews and build your network structure, which will then help it categorize all of your different data points into different categories uh, and, and, and to understand the correlation between all of them. Now, back in Quid, I want to tell Quid what I want to represent the title of my nodes and, again, that text that we analyze. Let's click here in this drop-down menu, and what you see here are imported all of the different columns or the components of the reviews we were just looking at in that spreadsheet. In this case, I'm going to call the nodes just based off the title of my review. Next, moving to body, we can click on the drop-down, and we see the exact same list of all the components. Now, I think we all agree here that for the analysis of categorizing and bucketing all of our different uh, reviews, I'm simply going to use the review text data. Now, again, a reminder, this section in your data must be text-based, which is how Quid reads and builds the networks. However, of course, all the metadata underneath can be used for deep analysis. I select the review, and in the top right, I'm going to click Next. The last page we come across involves industry and data types. Now, Quid Opus in the background has vast libraries of different terminology and concepts for all of these different industries and technologies in the top section that you see under industry. If your data pertains specifically to one of these areas, feel free to click it. That will then tell Quid to look for some of those organizations and apply that library to your analysis. For example, if I were to click healthcare and I'm running clinical trials data through Quid Opus, Quid will be able to extract the FDA as a regulatory agency and it'll be able to guide you in their presence in your, in your analysis and data. Below, we have data type menu. This is a uh, nice and easy way for you to kind of uh, interact with the background algorithm here in Quid Opus. We have fine-tuned it specifically for different kinds of data that we understand our clients are using here in Quid. For example, you'll see forums, financial documents, jobs and company postings, social media, etc. And this, again, just helps fine-tune Quid's algorithm in doing analysis for these particular data sets. Now, since we're running reviews, I'm going to click Reviews. Either way, if you find your data set maybe doesn't pertain to any of these different options, don't worry. You can simply leave the general as a default for both menus. And that's it. We're done. I'm going to click here, Visualize, in the top right, and let Quid start reading and synthesizing. Based on the size of your data, it may take about a minute or two to generate the network. Now, for sake of time, I'm just going to jump in here into the preloaded network of this exact same data set. What we see here for each node represents a review. And now the links between the reviews here in our network represent similarity of language among the reviews. We can simply click and look at all the different metadata as well. All that data that we saw in the spreadsheet before gets loaded in nicely here into Quid. For example, we see the city, date, and even the review rating. Now, just like any other Quid data set, the Quid algorithm will extract themes in your data set. And you can see that it's actually applied a color for the different themes that are extracted from the data. We can see these themes here in the top right in our, in our legend. For example, one cluster that talks a lot about a good overall experience. We see that comprising 17% of the network. 
So this is now, let me, uh, you know, really point out how this is really a, a time-saving aspect here of using QUID to understand and digest large amounts of text-based data. We're quickly analyzing them and bucketing, organizing these categories, just like the same way you do with news articles and patents, uh, like we were talking before, but now we can do it here, in this case, with reviews. And of course, we can quantify our analysis. We can start to understand what are the priorities among customers in these different areas. For example, we see the top cluster, and then we see a second one here, representing 14% of our data set, that is focused primarily on dealing with the salespeople at the different dealerships. Now, let's look at how some of the metadata overlays on top of the different dealerships. For example, let's see how I'm going to look at a bar chart representing my data across the themes for the different dealerships right here. We see on the left-hand side all of the different dealerships that came out of our data in the surveys. And each block here now represents a different review, just like we saw in our network visualization. You can use the legend again for guidance. In this case, let's look again at that cluster or that, that theme of reviews focusing on salespeople. We can select it, simply highlights our reviews. And to a quick glance, I can see that a large portion of those salespeople focused reviews are from the Berterra Nissan location. Okay. Now, let's get a look at how sentiment of these reviews overlays on top of our dealerships. As many of our, our Quid clients know, Quid has a built-in sentiment <coughs> algorithm that can understand sentiment in all of our data. So let's color now our nodes by sentiment. In this case, we're still looking at a bar chart. The dealerships are on the left. I've colored now, instead of by theme, I'm coloring the reviews by their sentiment. We can see how they're represented here in the legend. But also would like to point out that in this bar chart, you're seeing I have changed it to 100% stack bar chart. That way we can just get a good look of proportions. One that stands out is here, country Nissan has quite a large amount of negative reviews for that particular dealership. However, just two below, we see Nissan of Born is doing actually very well. About 75% of its reviews are showing very high positive sentiment, as well as Ron Bouchard Nissan as well. So we can now start to use the theme extracting that was from Quid to understand uh, the sentiment and analysis across themes, as well as across dealerships and that metadata. Let's, let's also look at the star ratings that we implemented that was also part in that same spreadsheet that we uploaded. In this case now, what I wanted to see are, in fact, the star ratings across the different extracted themes. We see, again, the good overall experience and salespeople and the other themes that are extracted. It looks to me that most of the one-star ratings actually fall under these extracting themes of customer service, attitude of the employees towards the customers, and that salespeople actually plus a uh, theme that we extracted. Now we're seeing that a good positive purchase experience has been what has led to a large amount of our five-star ratings and four-star ratings. Going back to our network, the next task I was interested in is I'd like to kind of dive in a little bit more in the psyche of our customers. I'm curious to understand, you know, what, what is really prevalent across their reviews? What are they going online, um, filling out in reviews and sharing with their friends and family? We looked at a few different concepts across the network. First of all, I wanted to look at reviews that mention cleanliness. There aren't too many. We see actually a few focusing on the right-hand side that Quid had understood that that is um, applied mostly towards the waiting rooms and the waiting time during service. 
Next, I want to understand efficiency. These are, again, these are reviews that are mentioning language and mentioning the concepts of efficiency in the comments that the, the customers have left. We see a few more, and we do see that these reviews fall under a few different other extracted themes. For example, efficiency finds three reviews here on the bottom left corner in the good overall experience theme. Okay? As well as a few here in red that are very similar. Here we can see they're linked up that fall under our oil change and routine maintenance extracted theme. Lastly, we looked at reviews mentioning relationships and describing the relationship between the dealership employees and their customers. And sure enough, we see these reviews falling across all over the map and they're just tying in with everything. Great. So we're going to take a quick pause here. I, we do see that a few folks have um, asked a few questions already, so we're going to take a quick pause. Yeah, these are great questions from the audience. Thanks for, thanks for uh, asking them. So, um, and, and please do ask questions as we go along. We're, we're, uh, this is an open session, so, so send us your questions in, uh, in the webinar control panel. So the first one, uh, can I manually group themes? For example, if Milford Nissan is owned by the same person as Curry Nissan, can I manually group that data together? That's a great, great point. So what we can do are, there's a few different methods in grouping, um, uh, grouping the, the nodes specifically and the different reviews. In one case, what you just saw me in understanding the reviews that showed um, the different concepts such as cleanliness and relationships, we can use what we call tags here in the data. So if you know that there are certain dealerships that are owned, in this case, by the same person, I can simply select those. Let's say, for example, I know that, let's say, this, note, this review shop and these are all from the same uh, dealership. I can simply tag them here in the bottom left and call them dealer owner one. Select that, and now I can come back to that category. It'll be saved there in your Quid network. You can come back to it tomorrow after you've closed Quid, and then you can run analysis. For example, I can then isolate these just like that, bring them together, and then analyze them separately. For example, and we can look at them again in another bar chart and see, okay, these two dealerships under one owner, they primarily fall under a few extracted themes. And a, a, we have another question that follows on that. Um, did you create the tags beforehand, or did Quid create them for you automatically? Great. In this case, these tags in the bottom left were created by the analyst. What we can do in Quid, just like our other data sets, we can use the top right search field here. And so we can type in words, and that'll search through our entire data set. So I can type in relationships, and I can find a few, no, a few reviews that mention key language. But you know, for that task, the analyst actually looked for all additional terms, such as trust. We can see here 12 reviews mention trust. We can look at honesty, three reviews. Or honest falls under 21 reviews. So we can do multiple searches uh, on different language, and that's how we categorize into the relationships and cleanliness. So we can really customize that analysis uh, based on however strategy you'd like to implement. Okay, one more question on this, on this um, example. Is there a way to see the volume of a cluster or its relative size? Yeah, absolutely. So in this case, we see in our legend that the extracted themes are in order by size. And we can see here, the legend shows us percentages. So 17%, salespeople, 14, etc. Right below the legend, we have our info panel. And in this case, we can see here that we have a total of just under 300 reviews. And as we select each one, I can see here 49 reviews have been selected. I can see under salespeople, 42. Let's look at our oil change and routine maintenance, 23. 
So we can not only just quit extract these topics and themes, but of course in all of our analysis we have plenty of quantitative um, concepts and quantitative analysis that we always implement and our clients of course always implement. Great and one more question. Um, the question is what kind of security do you have on Quid? Can I upload very confidential information? A great question. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, here at Quid, we take data security very seriously. So, like all of our other data sets, using Opus, your uploaded data is securely stored and only available to you. Okay, cool. Okay, great. So, <clears throat> what we saw in our poll is that um, you all want to see review comparisons. You basically want to understand your competitors. So, we're going to launch into another uh, example where uh, we'll help you do that. Excellent. Okay. So, in this case, we're going to hop over to another network. What we're seeing here are we categorized, we looked at almost over 500 we can see here, almost 600 reviews. Over 600 reviews that of two different basketball shoes from an online shopping website. Now these themes, just like before we saw, Quid first ran and under, read all the reviews and extracted themes. And just to show you actually here, I'm going to actually change the color of these reviews. And because just like we saw before here in, I'm going to, in my coloring menu, I'm going to actually look at the brand. And we saw that one of the basketball shoes is from Nike. Whoop. And here the other one is from Adidas. Another good question I think would be good to explain here. What is the significance of the size of the node? Oh, good question. Yep. So by default, the node size in our networks represents the number of these links that we see here. As we zoom in, we can see so larger nodes, for example, this node is connected to more of the reviews and so it'll be larger. Now what does that mean um, for analysis is basically it, rep it shows representativeness of a particular review in this case of its overall theme or extracted area. The more it's connected within its um, within its local region, the more it represents that category. Again, we can customize though the size. Here on the left hand side, we have basically our visualization edit menu. We can change the color as you just saw, and we can also change the size. So for example, folks that have been doing market analysis a lot in Quid, they know we can size company nodes by the amount of investment or acquisitions. We can size news nodes by amount of social sharing and publication count. And of course, in your custom data, any quantitative method uh, or metadata that you upload can be used for sizing. For example, if you have price of your different products, that would be something we could also use for sizing. So, um, you know, all of our clients know that, you know, a lot of these visualizations are very customizable for the message you want to uh, you want to send in your particular um, image or during your presentation as you're creating uh, that story and the analysis. All right. So first, what we saw is in these 600 reviews of these two basketball shoes. Again, just like the other data sets, we find the different themes that come across. We see a large group of reviews that are focusing a lot on fit. We see a, a large group over here in the bottom that are talking a lot more about the comfort of the shoe. And interesting, we see here over on the left using such specific language that it's not, it's not even connecting to the other themes, but it's focused on the price. And we see other categories like fast shipping, arch support, etc. So again, this is a really time-consuming, um, I mean a time-saving, sorry, a time-saving um, task for our clients where Quid can quickly run and start to extract these themes from your reviews. Now the next thing we'd like to look at is similar to before, let's move over to a bar chart visualization and let's look at how the different brands fall under each of these extracted themes.
In this case, I'm going to use a 100% stack bar chart, again, just to get an idea of proportion. And so we really see here that Adidas is edging out Nike in a few areas, including the ankle support, the arch support extract team, and we see that Nike is actually getting way more reviews of consumers <coughs> talking about the width and narrowness of the shoes, as well as that they're finding them too small. So now this is an important part we understand for online shoppers, especially you don't have an opportunity to try the products on. So what we're already noticing is that customers that are purchasing the Nike basketball shoes are having more difficulty finding that right size. And also, the description online, this is an insight that maybe that the description for those products needs to be uh, maybe updated or more clear uh, for sizing to the customer. Now, similar to what we did before, let's also apply sentiment to the same view here. I'm simply going to just change the color of my reviews to understand sentiment. And now we can get an idea, okay, we got the extracted themes first, and we can quantify all those across our data set. We saw how the brands fall across the different extracted themes. Now let's look at the impact of these different themes, and then start to prioritize. You know, if you're, if you're a marketer, uh, or you're, um, you're in strategy for your products, you want to start to understand how do we prioritize what we tackle first and prioritize the psyche of the customer. What we're noticing here is that the size issue of too small and with narrow, that first earlier we just saw that Nike was more prevalent in, these are receiving much more negative reviews. I'm now understanding that this is starting to be a, quite a pain point for the online shopper. And it's kind of a red flag um, uh, that I should, we should definitely address this. And this seems to start to stand out as a high priority task. Now, of course, we see that in terms of the category of price, they all seem to be quite positive reviews. So I can already start to understand that for these two models of basketball shoes, the price is at a really good point for these, for these products. As well, as I think pretty good, um, pretty good sentiment for the shipping of both of these products. So that's already given us some good signal from this shop, from this uh, online uh, store. Again, we can also color them by the ratings and see how the different uh, themes are affecting the overall rating, which of course we know influences the following consumers that visit the website. And again, I'm seeing the two small starting to give me a lot of one and two star ratings as well as the width and narrow. So I'm all quickly seeing in the data, start to be able to prioritize what are the first things we need to tackle um, in marketing these shoes. The last thing I'd like to show, I think it was pretty interesting, we wanted to look at a temporal view. Now, as we saw early in the review data, there is a date to everything, so we can really apply that here and quit. Let's move over to our timeline view. What we see here is that over time, now, not only do we get to understand the different extracted themes over time, how they're emerging in our data, just like the other quiz data sets, but we see that there's been a decrease in reviews written. This is a good indication of the potential shelf life of these products, that like they could be coming to a close, you know, prior to possible new releases. So we can also see how perception has changed and allows users to stay relevant with the consumer needs. Cool. We have a, a couple of great questions from the audience. Um, someone asked, does this tool work for other languages such as Spanish? Great question. Well, at this point in time, through your Quit support team, you can obtain networks for data in German, French, Italian, Korean, Chinese, and Spanish. Yay, Spanish. <laughs> um, Good. Another question. Let's say you're not marketing to consumers at all. Let's say you're not a, a B2C business, but you're instead a B2B uh, uh, operation. Can we talk about best practices or nuances when working with B2B data versus B2C, uh, B2C uh, instances? Sure. 
So I think one part where we've addressed that here in Opus is remember that uh, the menu that we had before of understanding the data types. We've been experimenting with many different data sets um, uh, you know, over the years. And that's, uh, that's why we implemented that, those options that you can fine tune without having to be a computer scientist. There's no code uh, necessary here in the process. Uh, you can uh, basically interact with the algorithm by selecting that data set. So if I want to go to reviews, if I wanted to look at financial documents, for example, um, it, or other internal reviews and surveys, you can, uh, that's one option there to really customize and tell Quid how to analyze the data. Um, another aspect is, um, is basically like the data is really, uh, you're really in full control. You just saw earlier how you know the upload process is as simple as a CSV Excel sheet. So for you can really break up your data into different categories to analyze. One quick example is let's say if we have uh, a net promoter score survey. If you're a large enterprise and you're selling enterprise software, um, let's say you run your um, net promoter score survey, you can maybe have a pros section, you can have a con section in your survey, and you can actually run those separately in different networks. And that way we can start to quickly extract themes across the benefits that my clients are getting, as well as some of the pain points that they're receiving. And of course now with all of our clients, we do engage directly and you know we've been doing this for, for a long time and we are happy to always help and provide our expertise with your data set. So the Quit team is here for your full support. Good. And I'm going, to, I'm going to see if I can clarify this just a little bit. Talk about how you can customize a network to, to really grab any kind of data. Um, uh, you know, let's say I have a really unusual business that needs to combine uh, academic papers with financial documents with another kind of data. How, how can you customize a network in that way? Sure. So, as we see, you can upload any metadata to uh, in that initial spreadsheet. So if you want to say, for example, generate first of all your network on or in your 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 analysis on, let's say, the academic and scientific papers, you can of course upload any other metadata that will be attached, just like we've been seeing here for all the different here in our information panel, and you saw that was used for different bar charts and scatter plots. So in one network, you can look at the different dimensions of data across your primary um, your primary text that was analyzed. But also, the way we run uh, we our clients run their engagements and full analysis is we could run maybe one network on your academic papers, and then we would possibly run separately. If you want to understand extracted themes and that 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 main basis of your network solely on the financial documents or on a different survey, we would simply upload a different network. Now we are experimenting here with a few methodologies to implement a few together that we have engaged with clients in the past. Um, so we would be we, we would love to um, you know hop on the phone and and discuss further and maybe we can. Uh, Find the best solution if if you're if you're if the data you're working with is is a little more complex. Okay, since our second runner-up in the contest was in the poll was understanding your competitors basically using academic papers. I think we should run through a a brief uh, tour through that just to show how it would work. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, if you'll ask us questions throughout, this is uh, this is good for us and good for you. So keep them coming. All right. So here in my product, in my project here in Quid, they had one here. Now we actually have um, full access to a really great website online of. Um, that it's called Scopus that has all kinds of academic scientific papers across many different areas. So in this example that we had here, I looked at all I looked all of the um, papers that have been released this year, all 2016, that fall under artificial intelligence tied to health. We wanted to get an understanding, you know, what's out there now. The use case here, as we let the the network, we'll let it upload. 
Um, what we can see here is, you know, we want to understand, you know, what technologies are out there, what is being written about that's maybe not uh, in, in companies, you know, for example, or it's not really publicized much in the news, kind of like what's under the radar. Rerun this. I think we have a quick little menu here in the middle. Let me continue to talk about the, the use case here. Uh, so if we want to run understand 2,000, for example, here of these scientific papers, um, you know, it's really challenging to read through all of them, similar to our patents database. Uh, it, it's time consuming, of course, uh, you know, for an analyst. So again, that's a great use for QUID. Let's run them through Opus. It'll help extract the themes just like you saw before with the reviews. And of course, we have all that metadata to understand who is behind this emerging technology. So as we can see here again, each node here uh, represents a different paper. And again, this is artificial intelligence that is tied to health. Let's say I'm in that uh, field. We can simply stop our network here. And now, same as before, we can see here in our legend the extracted themes. Now in this case, when you first run a network in Quid, it'll give you, start to give you names of the different extracted themes and key language that is unique to that area. So what I can already see is my top 7.2% of my network, we can see here 145 papers, are focusing on big data and applying big data to different connected devices. I see that here in my legend, but also before, just like our other quid data sets, we see Opus extracts key language. For example, big data, we see mobile devices. So these are a lot of papers now that are focusing on data analysis, data analytics across devices tied to personal health, as well as applied probably to hospitals and personal monitoring. And we can go across a few others. We can see over here, one group of, of papers, 103. Again, we can quantify all the different categories. We see it's particularly focused on signals from the brain. And we see here, this is being used, you know, signals and recognition. So I can already get an idea that the common theme across these papers is obtaining signals, uh, applying computer vision from facial as well as our brain. And we can see plenty others. We see here text semantic and language, you know, this is a paper focused on technology, understanding language and text, and et cetera. We can see plenty of other different categories across all these 2,000 different papers. One talking about sensors, et cetera. Want to hear more about wireless connectivity, which interestingly actually shows up quite close to where we before we saw the big data analytics. So we can start to now see a correlation of these different technologies being studied. Now under the hood, the same way that we got quick extraction and understanding, kind of a like bird's eye view, we can dive a little deeper. Let's say I find that my company is actually interested in developing similar technology to here, these connected wireless devices. I can go into my metadata. We can see here the abstract of the paper. So I can fully read the abstract and get more information about it. See again more key language. And here's about also some other metadata. For example, I can see here the affiliations. Who's actually behind this technology that I'm interested in? That maybe I may be competing, or maybe this is the technology I was looking to partner with. We can see here that this is from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, National Institute of Engineering from Missouri, India. We can also see the article number. We can get the authors behind this. If you're interested in reaching out to organizations and institutions to learn more about who's behind this development, we have the authors and we have, of course, their university, uh, um, we see the universities that they're tied to and studying with, and plenty of other different metadata. For example, we see this is a conference paper that was presented, editors, etc. The language, we even have a link here to the Scopus website. So not only can we use QUID, you know, to really read, extract in a fast fashion and give me a bird's eye view of where all of these thousands of papers fall under, but I can start to understand where are they coming from and I can now get an idea, you know, who is entering your market or who's, who's um, creating similar technologies. Maybe you're interested in partnering, 
you can real and you can really explore a lot of this data set further. And and again, a reminder here in Quit in House, we do have access to this Scopus data set. Um, so certainly, if you're interested in this kind of analysis, uh, you know, in supplementing your market analysis um, research with this, please reach out to your Quid representative. We can get this data for you. Cool. And and a question that's come in on this theme is, um, what if we don't? What if I don't have my own data? Can I extract data from the web? No, great. Yeah, there are multiple ways to collect data. Uh, you know, we're happy to discuss you know different methodologies. Um, you know, on, on uh, the call, if you want to reach out to uh, the, your quid uh, support um, team, and but of course, you know, we're here available to help you collect and structure the data for your analysis. Good, and and just a last call for questions. So send send those in if you uh, if you wanted to address them. So I'll go um, back to our panel here. Um, how much data can I upload? Like, what is the maximum number of rows of data that you can that Quid can handle? So at this point in time, Opus allows you to upload up to seven thousand unique rows of your spreadsheet. There's no limit. Um, to the metadata, so you can have plenty of columns, um, but we can upload up to 7,000. Now, if you find yourself with a larger amount of, uh, of data, let's say we, we understand we have clients that are working with, you know, tens of thousands of nodes, uh, certainly reach out. We can engage with you directly. Uh, here internally, we do have capability of applying larger amount of data, and the quick concept there is what we run is Kind of, we combine um, your, let's say, tens of thousands based on similarity, just like you're seeing here at the smaller scale. But we would apply that a large scale, um, combine them into similar areas, um, and then you can deep dive into those, um, you know, more specifically. But certainly reach out if if you feel uh, that you have a large data set and curious to analyze that. Another question: Could Quid make a network out of numbers? alone, purely numeric information? Now, through the software, no. Um, through, through direct through your client access through the software, no. Uh, you know, as you can see from our other data sets, you know, news and patents, and here that we've been showing with um, reviews and scientific papers, you do need text. That's what's building the network, the relationships between the reviews. And so that is definitely a requirement if you're um, uploading it directly yourself. However, if you're interested in visualizing relationships between entities that are strictly quantitative and number-based, please reach out to us as well. We do some of that custom analysis for our clients, so we can create visualizations um, based on quantitative um, based on quantitative data. But uh, you'd have to certainly certainly reach out to your uh, quid team, and we can help you um, put that data into visualization. That'll help you, of course, analyze it. And we can upload that to your um, to a project that's only shared with you. Cool. So thanks so much for tuning in for our webinar today. If if you're already a Quid client, we would like to invite you to try Opus for free on a topic that you're interested in. Just you know, send it our way, and we will um, we'll drop it into Quid and, and and show you what happens. Please reach out to your Quid account representative or email us at hi at quid.com for that, and we'll get you set up and walk you through it. If you don't use Quid, please contact us also at hi at quid.com. We can take you through Quid itself more thoroughly, and then we can follow up further on Opus specifically. Thanks again for attending. Thanks for your great questions, and we'll see you next time.